Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about bugs, so let's get into it. First thing we're going to have to define here is what is actually a bug. Well, a bug is just a piece of software that is misbehaving in some way. Now, you can have multiple bugs where maybe you are breaking the intended behavior of one of your tools, or you have a error in your code that causes a system crash, or you have something a little bit more subtle where you have a logical error or, or a so-called logical bug where you want your program to do one thing but the code that you have written is not doing that thing, it's doing something differently and so forth. So there are a few bugs that you can kind of encounter and it's um, it's a bit of a it's a bit honestly guys this every single program has bugs and you kind of has to have to just get used to it. You spend almost every single day tracking down bugs in one form or another or debugging your own program. So getting comfortable doing that is something that you should absolutely do. So let's just talk about the most common bugs and then finally we will just walk through this little application here to kind of illustrate how you would go about figuring out what a, you know, a few simple bugs. So you, in general we have two different types of bugs. You have a like a programming error, which is something where you have made an assumption in your code or something that is found within the code that you have written is actually incorrect. For a classic example of this in JavaScript is that you have an object, for example, and you think that there's a value that you can gra grab from that object, but there's actually no value, and you grab it, and then the code crashes, so you have an undefined error of some sort with a so-called stack trace. And a stack trace is just a helpful thing that your program is going to output for you to illustrate what methods have been called up until the point where the program actually crashed. A logical bug is a little bit trickier because that's the sort of thing where you may build something in a certain way, but you really meant to build it in another way. So imagine that you had some feature which you intended to work in a specific way, and you wrote all the code, and then in certain situations or certain circumstances, it is actually not doing the thing that you want it to be doing. That will never produce a stack trace or something of that nature. It's going to be a much more subtle thing to figure out because the problem isn't the code itself, it's the way that you wrote the code. It's simply not doing the thing that you want it to do. So what we're going to do now is that we are going to start up this little application. So we're going to start up Webpack in watch mode because this is a React application. And then we are going to wrote, write, run Nodemon, which is just a monitoring tool that is going to watch the file system because we're going to do some file changes as we were solving the bug basically. So let's just walk through the files first and foremost. So we have our Webpack configuration here, which just has a single entry point, which we call main. It's gonna output the bundle.js file that you see here, which is this gibberish that may not make all that much sense to you, that's okay. And then we have this little index.html file. We're gonna touch on that in just a moment. We're running in develop mode because we're using Webpack 4, which is awesome. And then we're using HTML, like the Webpack HTML plugin, which basically is just a way for us to in, like have a template file and inject the, uh, the output the JavaScript file, the bundle.js file, as a part of the HTML file. So what we're actually doing here is that we've declared a template, which is this file here. And it's just a very simple HTML file with a div where we're going to bootstrap our React application. And when we were running web, we were on Webpack, it's going to simply inject this little script tag here with the bundle the file as a source. As the, as the source, that's all it's going to do. And do, 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 do. and then we have our single single rule or the module that we are using, which is the Babel lo the loader, which is called Babel loader. Which all it's going to do is that it's going to help us transpile our JSX into nice plain old JavaScript, basically. And do, 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 do. let's actually look at the server. So we have an Express server, which imports some to do data because we're going to make a to do application, and it can. Just and we're going to just communicate through JSON. So what we're building here is basically an SBA or a single page application, which is just a completely an application made completely in JavaScript or in this scenario, it's going to be React. And then it just communicates with the server through through JSON or AJAX. 
So we have a single function uh, method called get slash to do's, which is going to get us all our to do's, and then we have a post which allows us to post our to do's to to the server. And then finally we have this little star at the bottom here, which is just so that if we go to any URL with, with the, on, our, on this application, we're simply going to serve up the index.html file and then React is going to just be part of that. So that's, that's basically it really. And finally, let's have a look at the main file, which is this little file here where we have all our, well, our entire application. So basically, We'll just scroll through this very quickly because we're going to dive right into looking at the actual application now. So let's refresh that. And here's our amazing to-do application, which has a few to-dos. So let's start by trying to add a to-do. All right, so let's do something. Let's do that. Foo. All right, so the first thing we now see is that we have this little red message here. Now this is a stack trace. So if I open up this, you can see here that there is a bunch of stuff going on here. What this is telling me is that, okay, these are all the methods that were called up until the error line happened. And the error is in this method called save to do, which is in my main JS file on line 34. Okay, so if I open that, I can actually see here that, okay, line 34, set state to do. So let's go into the code and have a look at that actually. So that's somewhere in here. Okay, so this is the line that's failing for some reason. So why is this failing? Well, if we want to figure that out, let's try out just doing that and try to do this again. So what I did now is that I set a breakpoint using my Chrome DevTools so that when I'm actually running the code, it's going to stop the program. It's actually frozen in time now. So I'm stopping at this line here. And then I'm simply going to see what the state is before I get to this line. If now if I get to, if I do something like this, if I just click step over now, it's gonna break. And the reason why it's breaking is because yeah, this is the failing line. So we've identified that this is the place where we actually have the issue. So let's try it again, where we simply rerun the program like so, and we hit this line again. So this dot set to do or set state is missing. We can't find that. So I cannot read property set state. That's the issue. Typer cannot read the property. But let's have a look at that. Because the, this keyword, which is referencing the context or this object that we have here, that's set to undefined. That's a little bit odd. We expect that this should be like this shouldn't be undefined. This should be something. So let's let's just break here, and let's have a look at that. So what's going on here? Let's just look at this function here. Save to do. All right. So we're calling save to do on our forms, and when we submit the form, we are going to call this function. And now I see what the problem is. You see. This is a little bit of a magical keyword which is going to be referencing the context that it's being called from. In other words, the, this keyword that I'm using here is not the same as what's being called from here. The reason for this is because this is dynamically bound to the, the caller of this method or the, of this function. In other words, this is referencing the entire object, but inside here, when we have actually called this function, which is being called from the form, this element here, now this inside of here, this is referencing the form, not my object. So in order to fix this, I have two options. I can either create a function like this around my, the, my function, so that the, this keyword is now still bound to the React component that we're working on. But I prefer to do this instead. Let's do this. Set to save, what's it, yeah. This dot bind, and, uh, save to do dot bind this. So what I'm doing now is that I'm saying that, all right, this method, I want to bind the, this keyword to my React component. Okay, so let's save all of that, refresh my application. And let's do some text like that. And now I got some different error here. Okay, okay, cool. 
that's okay because now I have another error instead. Like it seems that this is working now and we can verify that by going to the network and see that all right when I hit save to do I actually did this post call we saw because what's actually happening when I save my to do is that as we can see here I create a request object which is this code up here it's which is basically just going to take in a body create a request and then after I have created my little request object here I call the fetch function function with my URL here to the to-dos and then I expect a response of to-dos and then I set the state which is awesome because we could now see that using the network tab we actually sent away this to-do object here with the text that I had inputted. So cool, we fixed our first bug, now we have a different one. So cannot read property name of undefined. All right, let's have a look at that. So if I refresh this page, I have this bug and it seems to like keep on happening over and over. Like as we can see here, it's just happening again and again. Let's look at that. So let's look at what's coming from the server. So here is our request for our to-dos. Let's look at the preview here. Okay, well this seems to be fairly obvious. So we have this data structure that our to-dos have, but the to-do that we are getting, the new one that we created, is in the wrong shape. That seems fairly obvious. All right, because what happens now here in our little loop function here where we list our to-dos is that we are now looping through all of our to-dos and we expect the to-do to have an ID and a text and then we have a user object on our to-do and a name. And that's where this is issue is coming from because what we're trying to do here is that we cannot read property name of undefined, which is this line here. Which is, th th this is the problem. We are expecting there to be a user object on our to-do object, but there's not, as you can see here. For all of these first three ones, it's it's fine because there is a user object with a name, but not on this one. So what's happening there? Well, since the request went went out correctly and so forth, maybe the issue is on the server. So let's have a look at the server. Let's have a look here. So we have this little post method here. Okay, so what we're doing here is that we are just pushing the request body onto our array of to-dos. But if we go into our data here, we see that, all right, there seems to be a need to do some sort of pre-processing here. Because yeah, this doesn't seem right, like, because the stuff that we're sending from the client is not the stuff, like, it doesn't have the correct shape right. We need to fix this somehow. Okay. Let's try that. Um, let's you know. Let's do this. Let's put a breakpoint here, and then let's just run the server as uh, as a debugging step instead. To just verify that we are actually get what verify what we're getting into the server. So the way that this works is that in this is in Visual Studio Code. You your your solution may 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 vary, but what I can do here is that I can basically specify my little initialization pro uh, launch.json file here, which allows me to basically say, uh, let v Visual Studio Code start my application in debug mode. And the way that this works is that I basically now go to my debugging section here. I can set all of this up. This is a separate video. All I want to show you is that I can actually run a debugger here now. And as you can see now, so now Visual Studio Code has started up my server and it's running it in debug mode. So if I now just refresh my page here, you see that my application is working again. And now I send a request and ta-da, thanks to the people at Microsoft, we now have a breakpoint in my little application here. So what I can, let's just have a look at the body. So now I see that what, where the issue is because what's happening here is that I'm getting the like just a to do which is which is set to foo which is what I'm expecting but it's not the thing that I need to put in my JSON structure I actually need to fix this somehow now all right let's let's just do this the simplest simple way let's go and have a look at do let's grab this and let's do this instead to do let's do that 
and let's do something like this to do dot length plus one so we have a new ID and then we set the text to this instead request dot body dot to do and we can just keep the user as me because this is well we don't have to go further than that and then let's do that cool so here we are now we're pushing the to do correctly and it should have the same or the correct shape let's try this again let's refresh it foobar and ta-da now it's working perfectly and if we look at our network request here first works and then we, when we've done our post as we can see here we see now that yeah we actually have the correct shape on our data and I can probably keep on doing this as much as I want which is perfect yeah and now we have the expected behavior so now we have our simple little to-do app so what we've touched on so far is that all right we introduced the idea of being able to put a breakpoint or having a debugger which allows us to kind of step through or break our program and just check where this what the state is at any given time now you can do this with just console logs as well I mean you could log out requests and stuff of that nature but I highly encourage you to have a look at debuggers because debuggers are very powerful you can have them both on the server and you can have them on the client and that this is just the basics of how to figure out where a bug exists within your so in your system. So remember stack traces are your friend and debuggers is something that is very useful when you're trying to figure out what went wrong in your code. Have a great day!